So I stumbled across this article a while ago and it was made by a girl complaining about how Xbox had launched not even one game with a female protagonist and those were the responses. Now, I had never played a video game before until that Christmas when I went to my cousin's house just to find out that she had received a brand new Xbox with a game called Overwatch. We played for a couple of couple hours and at the end of the day I was just begging my parents to buy it for me, which they eventually did, thanks dad. And I got obsessed with this game and in addition to just playing the game, I also found out that there's an international competition in which only the best player take part. I would say kind of the Olympics of video games and me, me and my sister decided that we should just go and have a look at them playing live. They were extremely good, we had a lot of fun watching them, but then I realized that there was something a little bit wrong. Out of 122 players from all over the world, 121 are male and the only girl playing in the league was almost banned as she was accused of cheating. Because apparently, when a girl is good at something that is not properly related to her gender, she's automatically playing dirty. Now, how is it even possible that in a competition this big, there are no girls? I started doing some research, talked to some friends, and when I pointed this out, their response was, well, there are no girls because girls suck at video games. Wow. There is no scientific evidence that girls are somehow naturally worse than boys when it comes to playing video games. Uh, in 2017, the Daily Mail set out a study that demonstrated how there is no correlation between gender and gaming abilities and plenty of other studies have demonstrated basically the same thing. And the, the factor that does play a difference is the fact that girls are told from a very young age that those kind of things aren't for them. So they just don't even get a chance to learn how to play. Children are hypersensitive to gender roles. So while boys must stop to play football, girls are told uh, that they have to play with dolls and they are given fake kitchen tools and fake cleaning products. And the most video game looking thing that they will ever see is probably Cookie Mama or Barbie Life in the Dreamers. They will, this will not only give them a disadvantage in the future when they will try for the first time to play with a console and not even know which button to press first, but also it will perpetuate toxic stereotypes that will leave us forever. And this doesn't mean that some girls don't play video games and that some boys don't like playing with Barbies, it's just that the, when they do it, it's seen as weird and most of the time it's wrong. In fact, after I got obsessed with Overwatch, I also started watching YouTube videos of people playing it. And there's a feature in video games that allows you to type in the team chat and turn on your microphone to talk to other people, pick up a strategy and assert that you win the game. Now, I, in those videos that I saw and also based on my personal experience, most of the time when people realize that you're a girl, the only thing that you're gonna receive are insults, harassment and toxic comments. Comments like the ones that I showed you in the beginning. And sometimes I think of my little sister playing this game and seeing kind of comments like women belong in the kitchen, go and make me a sandwich and other nasty things that I won't repeat because it makes me disgusted. And I feel really sick. And this is just an example of how, yes, being a girl and being a gamer is seen as wrong. But why are people so influenced by stereotypes that they won't even allow other people to enjoy something as simple as a video game? Well, while it may sound weird, video games themselves might have a great impact on how teenagers see gender. For example, I personally would never play a game like Grand Theft Auto just because girls are not really represented, there are not female playable characters, and the only girls that you can see in the game are actually prostitutes that you can physically abuse or kill in order to get a reward out of. And in my mind, I still have the image of one of my best childhood friends playing this game, sitting right next to me and not realizing that it could be poten potentially dangerous if he wasn't so able to distinguish between reality and fiction. Someone made me notice that I almost always play female characters. It didn't really come to my mind until someone asked me for an explanation and I didn't know what to say. They were, they were just characters to me. So I asked my 12 years old sister why out of 40 uh, Overwatch character, this one is her favorite. And she said, well, that's because she has a giant pink robot. 
good point, I would say, but this is not the answer I was looking for. So we kind of talked again, and in the end she said that she likes her because she's a girl and she wants to be like her. This really hit me. I started looking at things through the eyes of a child. This is the reason why we need female characters in video games. The icon of Overwatch is a lesbian girl and in the game it's full of other girls of colors, disabled girls, ugly girls, old girls, gamer girls, girls of every kind. And in an industry that cares about women only when it comes to objectifying them, seeing this kind of representation is so heartwarming. Can you just imagine what it would be like to see girls fighting for justice, battling and saving the world and not only cooking, cleaning and uh, dressing up? Simple as it may sound, representation does matter. And maybe adding girls to video games could just change a little bit the perception that young boys have of girls and that young girls have of themselves. And maybe it could have stopped bringing the harassment, the misogyny and the toxicity in the gaming industry. And maybe this could be part of a very long process that will lead to the end of gender stereotypes and the consequences that they have both in the video game world and in real life. We tend not to realize how big of an impact things such as TV and video games have on our lives since we are very young. I know that it, this may sound like an utopia, but all the big things start from something small. And I think it is worth a try.